Okay, you're good to go. Okay. Hi, my name is Jesse Kerr, and I am going to uh, lead you through our fall painting today. Um, this is the last paint class of the session, so stay tuned for more information on uh, different opportunities. But this is this is our painting today up here, our fall tree, um, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So we're going to start with some paint. Um, we work from background to foreground when we're doing painting. So we'll do the background first. I kind of just want to lay down a little bit of color to begin with. Um, so I'm going to mix up kind of a teal. So I need some blue. Goodness, the blue doesn't want to come out. There we go. <laughs> I need some blue. And then some green. Okay. Probably a pretty big brush because it's a larger area that you're painting. So we're just gonna mix the colors together, adding a little bit of each color at a time until it's the color that you want. And feel free to change up these colors however you would like. Okay, that's looking pretty. Teely. It's a good idea to tone your canvas before you start any painting because um, usually little bits of canvas kind of poke through the different shapes and it looks a lot better if it's a color rather than white. So I'm just going to do a thin layer of the teal. Um, I'm doing it thin because I want it to dry quick enough that I can paint on it again without waiting too terribly long. And um, not much of this is going to show, just little bits of it will kind of peek through the different colors. So there we go. Just cover that with our teal. Okay, we are painted. So I'm gonna do just like a really super quick little paint sketch on here just to give some guidelines um, so that it's a little bit easier for us to do this painting. Um, and I have a few vocabulary words for you this time. Um, so, Normal view when we're looking at something is just eye level, right? It's the level of our, of our eyes while we're looking at it. And then when we're looking up above something, we're kind of looking down on it, we call that a bird's eye view. But when we're looking up, like into something, like our picture here, we call that a worm's eye view. So it's a little bit of a different perspective. And because of that worm's eye view, um, we're going to have some radial symmetry, which is where everything radiates out of one point. So you can see right here, kind of got a center mark right there. And then all of those lines, even the tree trunk, the branches, the leaves, everything radiates out of that point. So if we can kind of keep that in mind, it'll help us with our, with our drawing. So with my green, you might just give yourself kind of some guidelines. You know that my tree trunk's gonna be about there. I'm using a color that doesn't really show a lot because I don't want it to show, it's just for me, it's not for anyone else that sees the finished painting, is gonna see. And then my, uh, leaves are all going to kind of go that way so will my branches eventually okay radial symmetry from a bird's eye view all right so continuing with the 
strategy of working with the background first and uh, kind of focusing in on the foreground as we go. Uh, we're going to start with the leaves that are in the back. The back ones will be darker um, and a little less bright and vibrant. So we'll probably need a little bit more of our green. And then let's get also probably a tiny bit of black, not very much. Some brown. And another nice color is a uh, raw sienna or yellow ochre is very similar as well. Okay. And then we work background to foreground. We also want to work um, kind of general to specific. So general things first, specific details last, and then large to small. So you always want to start off with one of your larger brushes. And then as you continue to work on your painting, um, you'll gradually, slowly get smaller and smaller brushes and, and layer. Okay. So with my big -er brush, I'm going to start just laying in some of these leaves. And this is kind of an impressionistic style. It's not going to be super precise. Um, we'll just kind of be little blobs of color with visual brush strokes. And the direction that you point them um, goes with that radial symmetry. We want everything, these will point this way, those will point that way. And we'll keep that going. Okay, before I get around too far, I want to start adding some of my other colors because I really like it when uh, the colors mix themselves together. They kind of create new colors, which is always fun. So um, I'm going to dab into my green and I'm going to layer. And as long as your other page is still wet, it'll make new colors. This is the wet on wet technique where both my, my surface and my uh, paint are both wet and they're gonna blend a lot easier that way. Maybe, maybe even a teeny touch of black here and there. This particular black almost looks more gray, which is okay. I'm all right with that. Okay, that's looking pretty blendy. I'm ready con to continue this around the other way. So I'm watching which direction. I want the handle of my brush to match those guidelines that we drew when we started. It's gonna help us go the right direction so that we get that radial symmetry so it'll look like we're looking up into the tree from a worm's eye view. I can probably stop there so I can get my other colors. Uh, you kind of, when you're working with acrylic paint, you've got to work kind of quick because they just dry so fast and they just don't blend the same. 
when they're dry, you know. And you won't be as blendy and get that impressionism style where we've got the kind of blotches of loose brush strokes with the different colors. Oh, I forgot my my black gray. Oh, and now I'll continue the rest of the way over here. Again, making sure the handle of my paintbrush is going in the direction of the guidelines. And green next. And then my black gray. Okay. And do you see how the little hints of that turquoise color kind of peek through? It's a nice touch. Okay. Our next round of colors, it looks like we need some of that raw sienna. Um, some of the red, and we might even mix those together a little bit. Okay, so let's get some raw sienna, which is kind of a golden brown color. And you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, let's go down a size with our brush. So we keep wanting to go in, right? So I'm gonna go down, one more size down. Same direction. And we'll do one a little more towards the middle. Right now, I'll get some red. Ooh, that's a nice red. You'll notice with each round I do, I come in a little bit more 
but then also you want to take just a few little stray pieces and go up so that the different colors look like they're slowly kind of spreading and that'll help it visually blend a bit better. Okay. Let's make some orange. I'm going to take some of that raw sienna, some of the red. That's making a nice pumpkin-y orange. I feel like it needs a little yellow. We're going to need that color next anyway. So let's get it on our palette. A little bit. Yeah, it's nice and orangey. Gonna go down another brush size, a little bit smaller. Okay, got a lot of oranges there. Um, now let's make a yellow orange. So on my palette, I'm just gonna get some of the yellow right here and scooch a little of the orange we already made into that yellow and it'll make yellow orange. These last few layers are where it really starts looking fall-like. Remember, we go up into the other colors too. It's time to add sparkle. So the way we add sparkle is we're going to use some pure yellow next and also we need some white so that those really light bright colors will look like the sun kind of coming through the tree branches and glistening. <laughs> this white is sassy tonight. Okay. Sticking with the small size brush still. Okay, so I've got yellow with a little bit of white to make a nice lemony yellow. Then we'll start getting that on there. And I'm saying this to myself too, resist the urge to be too perfect. Uh, whenever you're drawing things that are supposed to be, you know, from nature, you got to go kind of organic and imperfect and not like space them out perfectly even. Which again, I'm saying to myself as well.
great. And then some white. Now I'm using a fairly small canvas this time. You can do this painting on whatever size canvas you want. If you do choose a larger size, then um, you would also adjust the size of your paint brushes. So I'm go probably not quite as small as we are on, on this video. Okay, white sparkles next. Again, we're intentionally not trying not to spread them out evenly, but do like somewhat random little clusters. Places where the sunlight is peeking through the branches. Sparkle, okay. I'm gonna change brushes again while I paint my tree trunk. And I also want these to dry a little bit before I do the tree branches. Um, so let's paint our tree trunk while those dry a little. So I've got my dark brown. And because we're looking up from the base of this tree, it's gonna be thick on the bottom and taper thinner as we get to the top. Right now I'm using dark brown paint. Okay. And then in, in the center of that, while that dark brown paint is still wet, I'm gonna dip into the raw sienna again. And I'm gonna let them blend so that the darker brown will act as a shadow. One thing that will help this tree look round, like a cylindrical trunk, is getting some curved brush strokes. Helps it look round. It's kind of like little smiley faces. Want some black in there too, I think. Good contrast, but as well, okay. Then I want a skinnier brush for the pointy part of it up there. That one looks good. So I kind of stopped short here. I want this to Taper up there. My skinny brush. Okay. Then I'll use that same skinny brush to get some branches going. Okay. A little bit one going up this way. Now remember what we said about things in nature not being too perfect. The same goes for tree branches. So we don't, we do not want straight lines. We want kind of wiggly organic lines. 
so not straight. And another thing about tree branches is they always go thick to thin. So start at the base of each tree branch, go thick, and then you'll taper thinner as you go. Oops. <laughs> I just threw it. <laughs> That's okay. Oh. All right. Get that skinny guy going. So there's a lot of different kinds of brushes you could use for your finer details. This is actually not a terribly skinny brush, but because it is a flat brush, um, it gives me options. So if I paint with it this way, it makes kind of a thicker, medium thick line. But if I turn it this way to the slim side, it actually makes a pretty skinny thin line. So it all has to do with how you hold it. Okay, we're reaching for the sky here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll just add a few more little highlights here and there to this tree trunk. This is the orange that we mixed up earlier. Put some red on your tree, not too much, just a little bit. I like to sneak in those extra little unexpected colors are always fun. Have a little interest. Okay. And then we'll do the same to our tree branches. The light would be hitting them from up above. So that's where we would see our little reflective highlights.
Finishing touches, I'm looking at behind that tree there and I want to make sure the yellows look like they're going behind it. So I'm going to make sure they match up all the way back there. Yeah, that's good. Okay. there's any other colors you feel like it's missing stick those in there real quick and you can change up those colors um, depending on what's in your house um, you can change the colors you know more or less of one or the other color so that it matches wherever you're thinking of hanging it you could even instead of a fall tree if you wanted to make this a spring tree you would omit the red and orange colors and just use um, different shades of green and yellow and probably some blue you could make it more of a spring tree instead of a fall tree if that's what floats your boat um, but make it yours make it yours you know um, try different brushes um, experiment with the way you add the paint to the canvas because that's what's really going to make it look unique um, the way I made the marks is not necessarily the right way it's just the way that I do it and depending on how much paint you have on your brush the way you hold it the angle um, your marks are going to look different and that's what makes it art because it's yours and it's unique and that's what will make it great have fun painting your tree i would love to see them when uh when you finish thanks everybody see you next time